okay yes thank you for reminding me <laughs> recording yes here okay someone is from bangkok mariolin is from holland marco is from bologna monica is from munster we have uh, germany of course oh no 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 the messages are tsunami of messages analysis rihanna oh, hamburg germany netherlands jabalpur india switzerland germany Niruna, uh, yeah, Melina from Berlin, Anil, Mexico, Mumbai, Dario, Piyush, yeah, hi Rajan, Cologne, Cologne, uh, Cologne, Berlin, Hamburg, Kuwait, Berlin, Peru, Bel, Belik, oh, there was something from Belik, Noida, India, Peru, hmm, Bangkok, people joining from Bangkok, you are not partying? <laughs> okay. Louis Shravani, Shravani Hyderabad, Peru, Chennai, Hari Hara. Okay, guys, let's start. I officially welcome you to day two of Visual Thinking Bootcamp. Before I introduce um, Dario to you, I have a few questions regarding the, the bootcamp. Guys, give me an answer. Do you know where you can check your recordings, your daily live scribes and assignment submission links if there are any assignments? Do you know an answer of this? What is the answer right on chat? Right on chat guys, what is the answer of this? Where you will find your recordings and live scribes? Not on WhatsApp, not on WhatsApp guys. This is the link which you have to check. Visualthinkingatwork.com BT live. That's the link. All 10 days, the link will be same guys. So if anyone is asking on Facebook group, wherever they are asking about recordings, live scribes, please help me by writing this visual thinking at work.com slash BT live. Okay. I also want to show you this uh, to all of you so that uh, you are not confused. Let me share my screen once. So guys, when you go on visual thinking dot visual thinking at work.com slash BT live, you will land on this page. Please watch it very nicely. So this says bootcamp live updates and the live updates are these. All the 10 days are mentioned here. So if you want to check your schedule, the schedule is also here, but all the days which are completed, you will find these two links here. So one will be submit assignment. Uh, if there are any assignments, like yesterday I gave an assignment, then there'll be check recording. So right now this won't work, but after the workshop in, in half an hour or one hour, this will work. And here you can check the scribes as well. So just click on this and you will be able to see the, can you be a bit loud? Is my volume okay guys or no? Right, yes it's or It's fine, no? it's just fine. Ah, it's fine. Yeah, wait, okay, this is full. Yes, it's yeah. fine. Okay. okay, so this is it's where fine. you will find the, the live, live scribes guys, okay? So if you are watching the live scribes, just go on this link and you will be able to see. And if you are doing a live scribe, then also what you can do is just click here on the plus sign here and you will be able to upload your live scribes. Cool guys, this is clear. Give me a thumbs up if this is clear. Yeah, okay, cool. So I am closing this. This was my first question to you. And my second question to you is, okay, let me give you the link as well right away on your Zoom call. One second. So this goes in the chat area. Okay, where is the chat area now? Yes, uh, Piyush, that was a very good question. What is live scribe? What is the what is the live scribe? Live scribe is just check out, check out the link and you will understand. When people make summary of a session using drawing, this is called live scribing. Oh, this message is not going. Yeah. Kanti, thanks for sharing the message. And my second question is, guys, this have you joined the bootcamp Facebook group? If you have not joined the Facebook group, you are missing out on a lot of fun things, guys. People who have joined, they know it. I am again sharing Hello? this. Okay. God, my enter button is not working. Why? Yeah, it works. Let me show you the, the Facebook group as well, guys, so that you understand what is going on there. People are sharing their practice sheets, their feedbacks, their excitement, whatever they wish to, they are sharing here. Let it open. So this is the Facebook group, guys. 
Visual Thinking Bootcamp 2021, and I've shared the link with you. People are sharing a lot of stuff. You can ask questions, doubts, any software you need, or whatever. All the doubts are entertained here, right? So please post here and join first of all. Ah, okay. So with this, I am again going back to my presentation, and let me take this opportunity to introduce Dario to you guys. Today is the second day, and we have. Dario Panigua, Dario, did I pronounce it right? Dario more, Panigua. More or less okay. More or less. Panigua, okay. Panigua. <laughs> Dario Panigua. And who is he? He hails from originally Argentina, but he lives in Italy, guys. And he has worked in advertisements before. He discovered that his life or his passion lies in visual thinking. Dario has been watching cartoons, playing with Legos. and drawing and doodling and that's how he has come to the world of visual thinking he has already authored two books on visual thinking and only few day few years ago he has he has started offering the online course about visual thinking and visual metaphors and he is helping all of you to become a professional visual thinker now let me show you as well a bit of his website so you get a, a sort of idea what he does so just go on google and type dario and type his name so So this is how, the, uh, folks, please mute your mics. This is how his website looks, and he is teaching metaphors without doing. Folks, please mute your mics. Okay, I'm muting it for some time. So you will learn how to make metaphors, and today Dario is himself here, and we'll be taught. He'll be teaching us all the basic formulas which we need to make metaphors, and of course, for elaborate uh, for elaborate courses, you can always vis visit his website. I hope I uh, introduced you well, uh, Dario. Are you satisfied with it? <laughs> Good. Now I'm. You can unmute, Dario. You can unmute yourself, and the stage is yours. I give the mic to you. Take the mic. <laughs> Let me, Dario. Are you able to unmute? Let me unmute you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got it. Yes. I have uh, paused everyone from muting. For oh, unmuting. Okay, now Dario, you will be able to unmute. Unmute. Ah, uh, Piyush, can I give a tip uh, here for everybody else before Dario starts? Because I see that mute unmute uh, with Dario might not work. Yeah. Why? I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. So I say that everybody means to keep them mute, and before they speak, just press the space button long, so they when they speak, and as soon as they release the space button, it becomes mute again. Oh, okay. Because people don't unmute themselves because sometimes they forget to mute again. Yeah, thank you. This was a cool tip, Dario. Why I am not able to unmute you? Ask to unmute and wait a second. Uh, what is happening here? Now, no. What about yeah, now? Now it is, now it is perfect. Yes. Now it's good. Yes. Now okay. Good. Okay, Dario, over to you. For me, <laughs> it's strange because uh, now that I have to talk uh, before you, it sounds like like I talk in slow motion. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my mood is more, more, uh, more siesta, South American siesta style. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I will try not to to make you sleep. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share my screen. I have two monitors. So uh, please tell me if I'm hearing the right monitor. We see your green uh, green presentation. Green? Okay, perfect. Good, good, good. So, uh, I'm Dario Paniagua, and um, I, I will avoid the the blah blah of presenting myself because uh, Pidresh already did that, and because I want to take advantage um, of every minute of the. available time to learn the basics of visual metaphors okay so today um, i will surely say a couple of provocative things that even contradict what other speakers will say in in their bootcamp presentations okay that that's why uh, i can't move my uh, Wait, wait, wait. Put your put your cursor on the on on the screen, Dario, and then it will move. Sometimes it hangs. But wait, okay, okay. 
range. Okay. So uh, I, I was saying that th this is important. I'm not the owner of the absolute truth. Okay. So each experience is personal. And my best advice is to try all the things you will learn in this camp and then choose the best concepts that uh, suit your needs and the needs of the people who will use or watch your visual thinking. So it's all about what works for you, not for me. Okay. So we will talk about the uh, importance uh, of being disruptive. We will talk about the concept of outstanding. We will learn uh, by doing some exercise to create powerful metaphors. And we will also learn about reverse thinking, which is a very, very uh, helpful tool. And we will do a visual de-schooling, which I always encourage to people who learn metaphors in my courses. So um, we also we will learn some commandments. And finally, we will talk about a concept that nobody considers when doing visual thinking, which is horror bakui. Okay. So I have a, a, a big challenge today. We are many people. And uh, I have been thinking about making the content that I will discuss today relevant to everyone. Maybe you have never made a, a visual map and you're just starting at this, or perhaps you are an experienced graphic facilitator, coach, or, 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 or graphic recorder. And while it seems impossible to talk about something useful for those two extreme situations, professional uh, people in this field on, on one hand and little or lack of experience on, on the other, there is a way to approach metaphors so that everyone gains knowledge because no matter the degree of, um, of expertise of most people who do visual thinking, some mistakes repeatedly occur in most people who use visual thinking in, in their world. Okay, so that is why today we are going, uh, we will learn the basics of making metaphors through the most common mistakes that almost everyone makes. The big fails, uh, the big fails, let's say, okay? So this leads us to define uh, a housekeeping for this training session. Please make your questions at the end of the presentation. This is very important. We are a lot of people today. If you post your question in the middle of the presentation, it will surely get lost in the vast sea of, of, of comments. So save your questions for the Q&A slot so I can ensure to answer everything. Please turn your mix off. And, and when I, uh, I will ask you to show the things you're going to draw, you will be able to turn it on to present your drawings. And this is very, very important. I want you to make as many mistakes as possible today and to feel comfortable making those mistakes. Because indeed, if you make mistakes, it means that you're trying and learning new things, okay? Therefore, we will associate these mistakes with basic concepts to learn to make metaphors that work. And to make it even more straightforward for you, we will do an exercise to reinforce what you will be learning for each of these concepts, okay? So to tell you about the first mistake and the first concept, we will start by doing an image dictation, okay? So I want you to take a pencil or pen and, um, and, and, and paper, okay? Give me just a second. Give me just a second, okay. Let, let me explain this first, okay? 
one because this is important. Um, I don't care about the drawing style for my students. Okay, so I care about ideas and stories, not style. And to reassure you, I want you to, to show you the two extremes of drawing complexity by two professionals who do things well, okay? So one is a person, his name is Dave Gray, and you probably know him uh, for the book Game Storming. And he has an extraordinary concise and simple drawing style. And on the other side, we have a company which is Scriberia, which, is, uh, which are very creative in telling visual stories. So as you can see in the drawing, uh, they have a more detailed style opposite to today, Ray, okay? But there is a common thing that connects them. They are very good at telling visual stories. And in visual thinking, that is the only thing that matters, okay? So today, before we, we start with the dictation, today I want you not to worry about your style because it does, it does not matter if you're closer to one end or the other. I'm interested that you understand the concept of using metaphors to create little stories to convey a message. That's it, okay? Th th this is really important. Um, so, I, I was telling that uh, today we will learn the basics of making metaphors through the most common mistakes that almost everyone makes. And to tell you about the first mistake um, and, uh, and, and, and the first concept, we will start by doing an image dictation. I want you to take a pencil and, and a pen and draw what you will be listening to. And I'm going to dictate, dictate a few words to you. And I want you to follow these rules when you have to represent each word while drawing, okay? So the first rule is draw at a basic level. Hmm? Do not draw in a Leonardo da Vinci style. This is important, okay? Draw in an Egyptian style. And by Egyptian style, I mean no perspective, no shadows, just flat drawings, okay? Whoa. Okay. Why, is, why I have that drawing with my mouse probably? You can avoid uh, making annotations. I will delete it right away. Don't worry. Uh, can you please, please, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, I, 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 I continue talking. So um, remember, it's not a drawing contest. This is very important. It's, I just want to teach you the very first basic mistake and concept about metaphors. So make little drawings so everything fits uh, on the page and you can randomly draw them on the page or even connect them all in a scene if you want, okay? But just make sure they all fit on the page. Hmm? They are 18 words and I will start. I will say the words, but I will also write the words on the screen so you can, you can follow, okay? The words are home, simple drawings, bird, person, Bridge. Dog. Idea. B. 
bone. Friendship. Worldwide. Think. Can you kindly go a little slower? Sorry, I'm not following up. Oh, yes, yes, no problem. Uh, I'm doing this on purpose because I don't want you to draw details, okay? But I can go slower. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Deadline. Couple. Path. Change. Objectives. Success. Fidelity. And the last one is growth. So I will stop to share. You need to see, you need to, to watch the words uh, a couple of seconds more. Okay, yes, please. Okay. We wait a little bit more. I put it there so you can watch them. Okay, we will stop now. Don't worry if uh, you didn't finish, okay? It, it was a, a warm up exercise. Uh, let's analyze some of the concepts that I have dictated to you. Did any of you create a scene with all the words? No. No, oh, nobody. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you mean, uh, uh, created everything that you asked for? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if anyone create a, like a situation with all the words. Oh, okay. No. It's just like an icons kind of thing in the box, box, separate, separate words, not the story font. It's not okay. The but but you every create, word is dropped. It's, it's a situation, all the, all the elements have sense or are isolated elements? No, isolated, isolated elements. Isolated. isolated. Everything, everybody is isolated. Okay, okay. Mostly. Uh, I, I connected three of them. Okay, but not all, just three. No. Okay, good, good, good. So, did any of you draw something for home, for home? something other than a house? Yes. Okay, who? I draw a sofa. I did. A couch. Me too, me too. 
I do a doodle. Okay, good. I did a snail. Good. A snail for, for home? Yeah, the, ho the house one is the back side. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. There's a house. I drew a couch. We say that the house I I bought. I drew a heart with the house. Okay. I do a. How about a couch? How about a couch for the house? Good one. Good one. And then you draw something other than a libel for idea. Yes. Who? Dario. Can you hear me? Smile. The bulb. Can you see my drawing? Light bulb. Lighted bulb. Light bulb. Electric bulb. 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 Lighted bulb. I mean, I, I want, I want to know if anyone, instead of drawing a light bulb for the concept of idea, drew something else. How about fire? Fire? Uh, fire. Can you hear me? A cloud. Idea as fire? A cloud. Exclamation. Okay, I mean the, the the classic bubble. By cloud, you mean you mean the classic bubble, right? Okay. okay. Yes. A smile. So, if if you use paper, I'm going I'm going to ask you all of you to show your drawings on the screen <clears throat> for a couple of seconds. <clears throat> Please stop sharing your screen. Stop sharing your screen. Uh, um, no, no, not sharing your screen. Just put your drawings uh, in front of the screen so we can we, we can we can all. Uh, oh yes, good. Uh, what about those who are drawing it digitally on their screen with their watching the class on? Just show it. Show it on the screen. Show it in the screen. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So. As you can see, uh, <clears throat> tangible things are easy to represent, okay? But what happens with the abstract? That's a challenge. Most, so most of, the, most of you drew the same things. And, and why? Because every time we are going to draw a concept, we usually grab the first image that, that comes to our minds. So we want to make sure that everyone understands what we are drawing. And this behavior brings uh, a couple of problems, okay? So I'm going to share the screen again, and I'm going to talk about these problems. <clears throat> you see the, the green screen, right? Yes. Okay. So, the first problem is that visual uh, thinkers struggle to create metaphors just because they are afraid of not being understood. The second problem is that fear causes conservative thinking. Okay? That's when practitioners draw more straightforward icons. And this is good because every, every, everybody will understand you, but at the same time, if you draw just icons, it's not so good because people will trip over your cliches. So let's start about, uh, let's, let's talk about cliches. The brain will always look for a shortcut. It's uh, for this reason that I always dismiss the first ideas that come to my head, because if they come quickly, they are indeed ideas that I have seen millions of times elsewhere. That is why it's important to avoid the first mistake, which is incomplete mapping, okay? So let me explain this concept. Let's see uh, this phrase said by Gandhi. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. So the most common mistake is that people stop and always draw a tangible part of what they hear. It is comfortable for the brain and it is comfortable to draw. 
So this is related to the concept of, um, of a map. The support <clears throat> where we display our work as visual thinkers are maps. A visual map can be a, a page of a sketchbook, a panel at an event, um, <clears throat> a napkin like Dan Rome's uh, famous book, or anything else that helps depict a series of topics emphasizing relationships between elements. And by incomplete mapping, I also mean that people draw items on the map without creating sequences. That is why most visual maps are created using icons and not metaphors. So a metaphor usually connects elements by creating a mini sequence, a mini story, a mini story, okay? An icon doesn't. So most of the maps you see out there are created using lots of icons that are not connected to each other. This is really important. So let me explain this concept by showing you, by showing you this. So you see a cage and you think cage. So you see a bird and you think bird in a cage. But you see this and a lot of things happen. There is a lot of disruption and a lot of sequences going on on your, on your head. So how many situations did you recall when I show you the third image that you probably relate to your last quarantine experience? So another important uh, thing is this, metaphors <clears throat> help us to catch people attention. And but to create attention, we need to emphasize a difference. So please ch check these images. Um, and tell me, where did your eye drop? So as, as you can see, uh, a particular element can be emphasized when it's dissimilar. So metaphors help us to break the pattern of similarity. And this is a very powerful concept. If you understand this, you learn to detect which metaphors work and which doesn't. This effect is called anomaly. You can't do this with icons. So the picture I showed you uh, before with, with the man inside uh, the, the bird cage is an anomaly. Okay, the bird, uh, the, the bird cage with a house shape is an anomaly. So the anomaly in, in the third image tells a story the others don't. So that's the main difference with icons. So it's better to have a story to look than an explanation, okay? So I use metaphors to tell stories. I use icons to give, give explanations. Mm -hmm. So metaphors help us to create sequences that create mini stories that create proper storytelling. So visual thinking is nothing without storytelling. You can't do that with icons. So imagine that uh, you are a father, okay? Uh, or, or mother, and you take your, your child to, to sleep and uh, he asks you for a story. So you grab a book and you say, once upon a time, castle, guardian, princess, witch, king, dragon, fight, love, and they live happily ever after. So you have to relate the elements. Making visual thinking based on only on icons does not help to interrelate our visual thinking. Metaphors help to create stories. So, what is the problem with stopping only here? We end up always 
drawing the same things everybody does, and we end up drawing the same things for different topics. So Im imagine that you have to go to, to a great event, okay? And in that event, there are people that you want to make a good impression. So to convey your message, you wear the most elegant outfit you have in your, your wardrobe. And you go to the event and you make a good impression. So the next day, you go to the cinema with some friends and you also show up in an elegant outfit, okay? So the weekend arrives and you decide to go for a walk in the mountains and you put on an elegant outfit again. So at first you can seem disruptive, but in the end you're repetitive. So we can say that there was consistency the first time you dress because your clothes were appropriate for the event and the message you wanted to give about yourself. Uh, on the event's day, but the following days, there was no relationship between how you dress and the places you wear. So this whole metaphorical story talks about the big second mistake visual thinkers make when they build metaphors, okay? They dress their maps repeatedly with the same dress. This is the biggest problem seen today in people who do visual thinking, okay? So how many times have you seen maps in which the main image is a world? Look, just, I, I just picked some random maps uh, online, okay? So, how many times have you seen uh, maps that practi practitioners draw based on the concept of the mountain path? Indeed, millions of times. So let me ask you a, a provocative question regarding the examples I show you. All those maps have different topics but use exactly the same metaphor. Do you think that works or not? And to measure if they work before answer, think in terms of attention. That repeated metaphor encourages you to read these maps. I will have a preconception about it, that's for sure. But if the topic changes and if it was a striking topic, I might not follow through. That's, that happened to me before. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, of course. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be provocative here, okay? So as I said in the beginning, I don't own the truth. I'm talking about my own experience, okay? This is this is very important. But uh, same metaphors this, sometimes do create the blind spots. That's my observation, Dario. Sorry. Same metaphors many times used for different purposes create a blind spot, and we do miss the point. Yeah, I think the same. I think the same. Thank you. Thank you. We might fail to impress the or, or we might fail to express. The engagement fails, the, the particular reader engagement fails if we keep using the same metaphor again and again. Okay, thank you, thank you. So um, uh, let's, let's, let's continue to talk about this. So let's talk about, um, let's go back to a metaphor uh, of the metaphor of the outfit but this time with a real case, okay? So I choose an extreme case like Mark Zuckerberg's because this guy has dressed
Sorry, Dario, Dario, unmute yourself. Sorry. Can you unmute? Dario, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, what happened? Dario, you are mute. Dario is mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah wait. Uh, Dario. Now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Thanks. So, um, can you start where you from from the first <laughs> picture actually? Uh, we missed you only for uh, last thirty seconds, Dario. Just to tell you. Okay, from where? From wait, 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 wait. No, not from here. Not from here. You can close that one finished. Okay, from here. From here. Yeah, okay. okay. So I, I was telling that I choose an extreme case like Mark Zuckerberg's because he has raised practically the same since 2010. So please look at these random pictures um, from the last 15 years. So look what happens when he had to give explanation about his company to the congressman. So he, obvi he obviously changed his outfit because he needed to, to change the message he had to deliver and the people he needed to persuade. So you need to adapt your metaphors to the message. It's all about the message you want to deliver. And this is important. You fail as a visual thinker, not because you don't draw nice metaphors. Visual thinking has nothing to do with drawing nice. You fail as a visual thinker if nobody reads your visual maps. And that's what happens when you repeat yourself by drawing the same things without considering the topic you're depicting. Okay, so uh, Seth Godin wrote a, a, a fascinating book almost uh, probably 20 years ago, okay, that talks about this. So the, the principle behind Seth Godin's book, the, the Purple Cow, is to stand out, okay? So, whoops. Okay. Um, if, imagine you are, you're traveling in the, in the countryside and you keep seeing white and brown cows. So at some point you will stop looking at, at them and ignore them. But if however, suddenly you happen to see a purple cow, wow, you certainly won't forget that, right? So I, I refer to Seth Godin because this standout concept uh, is the perfect introduction to the first component that every metaphor needs to have. That's the third mistake, visual, uh, um, which is um, disruption, okay? Disruption is the thing that you need to have with metaphors. And uh, the, the first mistake is that people don't disrupt. Disruption leads us to the first definition of metaphors, which is an image that um, the viewer is meant to understand as a symbol for something else. So you deconstruct the mental model of people by creating new meaning in addition to the image's straightforward sense. And being disruptive helps you to achieve that. So that, um, that's the, the, the first method we are going to learn today. It's a series of techniques that will help you to be disruptive. Can okay. you say that another time, uh, Dario, what is the, the, what is a metaphor? The definition. 
Yeah, so um, an image to be considered a metaphor needs to be an image that the viewer is meant to understand as a symbol for something else. That's the Thank definition. you. You're welcome. So what does being disruptive mean? To be disruptive means to prevent something from continuing or operating in a normal way. And there are three ways to achieve this. The most straightforward way is to create an unrelated image and keyword. So the, the format is very similar to an icon because you see the complete and insulated object just like an icon, you don't apply any transformation at all, but you link that image that you are drawing to a keyword that doesn't describe the literal meaning. So at first, there is no apparent connection with the keyword you write, but of course there is. Some of you did that on the, on the first exercise. You wrote, uh, I don't remember who, but wrote a home and instead of drawing a house, draw a herd, okay? So the meaning is richer than an icon because if I show you an image like this, I'm prompting your brain to think. Your brain is thinking, wait, 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 that's a snail. Why it says home? So he starts to think and, and then says, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So that little process make people read your maps because attention is about difference, okay? So let's try, let, let, let's train this first concept by doing the following exercise um, and a related keyword. So please choose one of these two words from the dictation we did before and write down some keywords. But let me put a, a, a bit of difficulty in the, in the exercise. You cannot write those words, okay? These are the first words that I was referring to that the brain will always look for because they are the most comfortable and that they, and, and they end up playing against us because they make us drone cliches. So please start writing some keywords that you could relate to these images. Let's say four minutes. Uh, Dario, can you just put the uh, images back, please? I'd like to see what are the words we are not supposed to be using. Okay, yes, of course. Thank so, you. You're welcome. You can write world, you can write global. You can't draw, uh, you can write light bulb, you can't write ideas or creativity. Christmas ball sponge plate. Good, 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 good. Mm. 
Good. Interesting. Okay. Good. Good, nice, nice, nice keywords. Interesting. Good. Very nice. You're you're all reading, right? Good. So we will continue. So I I, I want to to try to fit. And, and, and give you a lot of information today. Okay. You see the yellow screen, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Can you unmute every, everybody, yes. please? So okay. we are boiling. Yeah. yeah, everybody is uh, able to mute. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So um, this is the that was the most simple way to create disruption. Okay. The second way to create a disruption is to draw things out of context. Okay. You draw something or someone in a different place from the place people expect to find that thing. So the disruption here happens in the context where you draw your main image. So check these examples. Hmm? So things that are absolutely out of the blue. But these are very powerful metaphors, okay? So let's try this concept by doing an, an exercise. Draw a man checking his phone and create a disruptive scenario around. Okay, don't be clever, be absurd. The more you're disrupting, the more you create attention. It, and it, it also made your audience remain more time reading your map. Why? Because you show them a situation where there is an anomaly, something absurd that their brains are trying to understand. So don't, don't worry about the style. You can draw your mind uh, like this if you want. Remember Dave Gray's style that I showed you in the beginning. It's not about the style. It's about the story you will create around that image. Put that man in an absurd context. When you finish creating the absurd situation, I will ask you to give meaning by putting a keyword to the scene. 
And what we are going to do is I will award the one who creates the most absurd situation that makes sense, okay? So you just have to publish your work on LinkedIn or Instagram and tag me. So I can see your, your proposals for this assignment. I will reward the most effective metaphor by giving the winner the possibility to have a one-to-one -one coaching session with me regarding visual thinking. And I will adapt the, the, the coaching session topic and, and the content according to the winner's experience, okay? If you don't want to publish your work and tag me on social media, no worries. Write me an email. I will provide my, my address at the end of the training. I don't care about having followers. I only care about you learning how to create proper metaphors to differentiate your visual thinking, <laughs> okay? Good. Uh, hi, Dario. Yes. Uh, can you please explain again that a disruptive and going out of the context, the yellow slide? Okay, yeah. Look these examples. For example, the man, instead of being in a boat, is inside a shoe. Okay, the context is absurd. Or the man inside the egg. Okay, so you only have to draw a man with a phone and let's say instead of being in the street or in his home, draw around him an completely absurd situation or scenario or context, okay? So when you end, up, when you end doing that, you put a keyword to give sense to that situation. Clear? Okay. Good. Thanks. Good. So uh, you can you can find me on LinkedIn if you want to tag me, uh, like Dario Paniagua, or in Instagram. I will give you all the information at the end of the. You, you don't have to do it right now. Okay. You you can do it uh, later. So we can continue with the content. Or if, if you don't want to to share things, you just can write me uh, uh, an email, okay? So, okay. Uh, the third way to create disruption is by doing what I call Frankenstein it technique. So you blend up unrelated things together to create uh, a new something full of meaning. And all the things that you draw here are impossible. They don't exist in the real world. So people don't recognize them, uh, don't recognize them at, at first sight. And to exercise this technique, we're going to create a incoherent mashup, okay? First, I show you some examples of Frankenstein it. So things that are blended together. Hmm? And an exercise to exercise these is this. What do you get when you combine two unrelated elements? Okay. I want you to combine these elements and see what you come up with. Hmm? So uh, an egg with a, with a man, a fist, with a, with a tree, a coffee machine with a building. Mm -hmm. Are you, excuse me, can, can you explain this uh, again? I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Okay, uh, you only, you have to blend these elements together to create something new. Do we have to draw or do we have to speak, uh, write down the word? You have to draw. You have to draw. Okay. Look this example. Dario, this is uh, also a creative technique uh, that's called forced relationships. 
right? So I think the people who have not played that game before, that, that's the whole point. To disrupt is to force two things together that don't normally go. And that makes it be sticky and memorable, right, Dario? Exactly. Exactly, thank you for the contribution. Yes. So you have to draw, combine these elements together, okay? Uh, this is related to what I, I, what I said at the beginning. We fear not to be understood. This is the most difficult part as visual thinkers, okay? And that's what I was relating when I was talking about conservative thinking. So allow yourself, because many times we, said, we say, connect with your inner child, okay? This is the things that we do when we have four, three, five years old, okay? So you can do this as a, as a homework and I continue with the presentation, okay? All we did up to now has, uh, was the, the disruptive approach. And to learn our second approach, we need to do what I call visual de-schooling. We are born with a superpower that is to express ourselves through images. But when we are born, drawing is, is really a superpower. And we, do, we, we don't do it like adults. Then the school acts like our kryptonite and they begin to give us adult rules. So color inside the figure, the, the sky is blue, the, the dog is brown, uh, the plant is green, etc. And this is how we, be, we begin to develop conservative thinking. And we end up killing our creativity. Okay, so that's why I, I have another exercise today that is reverse thinking exercise. Which means to um, what elements can we blend to arrive to this result? Okay. So, for example, a car and a shoe. Okay, and, and we, we get the classic rollers. So, as an exercise as a homework, I want you to think about which two elements you can blend to create a bell. Hmm? So I'm relating, uh, mixing and relating things. Or you can do the same to create a hat. Which two elements can you blend to create a hat? So this exercise seems ve seem very, very difficult because we approach them with the adult approach, okay? And this is the most difficult part. This is the most difficult part. So as homework, whoops, you have to create, you have to blend two elements to, to create a bell and or a hat, okay? Choose one of these two as an exercise to do the reverse thinking. Okay, so I make you uh, to do this because we need to start thinking like children to learn the, the following concepts. And the second approach is the children approach. 
And as you see in the following examples, children um, approach creativity through three, three powerful actions. They don't follow the rules, they are incoherent, and they are unpredictable. And, and you, can, you can recreate this behavior when drawing metaphors by doing these things. The first one is to color illogically, okay? And not being linked to real colors help you create awesome color schemes and help people focus their attention. The second thing that you can do is make proportions look absurd. And that is drawing big things that should be small and, and vice versa. Disrupt what people expect to watch. So huge insects, uh, giant objects, you name it. And the last one is humanized animals. These are the first visual metaphors children create uh, without even knowing it, okay? Stand up animals on two legs and dress them like humans. Because animals, in, instead of people, sometimes make concepts easier to communicate. And then we have the commandments. There are more than 10, but I'm going to speak about three. These are some uh, actionable statements that I use randomly when I have to create, uh, when I have a um, creative block, okay? So they, they help you to think laterally instead of literal. They are disruptive and, and concrete actions in a very short sentence format. They, they act as a trigger to help you unblock and to come up with good metaphors. So some of the commandments contain some of the previous methods you have all, already learned. So uh, the most important thing about these commandments is that they kick you out of your comfort zone. That's why these commandments guarantee, guarantee you to, to avoid cliches. It would be very long to explain all of them, but I will explain a couple that are key. So I, I will start with this one because um, I told you that our brain loves shortcuts. So, and this commandment is a fast solution when you don't have time to think, okay? And the commandment is think the opposite, okay? So uh, Chris Wilson from Scribiria explained this concept to me a couple of years ago, and it's really simple and powerful. And sometimes simple things can give you the best results. So drawing the opposite of the topic you are depicting means changing the point of view. So ask yourself the opposite thing of the statement someone is saying. And so for example, if someone says the world is changing, you change the point of perspective before drawing by, by thinking, what if the world wasn't changing? And how would I depict that? Okay, so it's about thinking the opposite. That gives you a lot, a lot of ideas. Hmm? The second commandment is humanize animals or objects. And let me give you, show you some examples here. So. We usually identify animals with very clear behaviors and we generalize these characteristics, okay? So um, the lions are the, the animal kings, the, the ants are workers, the, the bees are well organized. I don't know, the, the, the monkeys are playful, the bears uh, hibernate. So, these well-known characteristics are a generalized perception and that makes them a great resource to apply when describing people's behavior. Humanizing these animals makes your audience 
automatically attach these characteristics to the people you're drawing. And then we have um, humanizing objects, objects, okay? In, in this image, we see a, a, a controlling mother. So look how humanizing objects work uh, differently because we don't associate objects with behaviors, but with actions. And this opens a wide spectrum of possibilities because the recognizable action that the object does is transferred to people when we humanize those objects. Okay, here you have some examples. So we, we use humanized animals to create metaphors that exaggerates a person's personality and we humanize objects when we want to create metaphors that exaggerate people's actions. And then we have build burn bridges. Look at this example or this one. So this commandment makes you find connections between things, but it also helps you cut those connections depending on, on where you want to focus. So you don't have to be literal by drawing bridges as the, as the, comment, as the connector element. It could also be roads, uh, wires, tunnels, rails, ladders, stairs, arms, pipes. So these are great connectors that we use when we want to create metaphors about improving relationships between very different, uh, different people or, 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 or people that do not like each other. So we can connect or, dis or disconnect not only people, but also companies, um, institutions, countries, areas. Uh, so we can also mix by connecting or disconnecting people with objects. The possibilities are endless. Okay, so uh, that was a, a lot of information. I, I want uh, today close our session by talking about the last mistake that almost everyone, everyone makes. We're going to talk about horror bakui. Okay, horror bakui is not connected to metaphors, but visualization in general. Okay. And the, the, the term horbakui literally translate is Latin for fear of emptiness. And, and, and Mario Prats, which is an, an Italian art critic, used this term to describe the cluttered uh, art of the Victorian era, which had excessive or um, ornament use, okay? Let me show you some examples. As you can see, every little space was stuffed with details. So white space is the space or negative space where design elements um, do not exist. The portions of your map where you just leave blank to give air to, to your illustrations. So white space is sometimes difficult to handle because many visual practitioners read blank spaces as incomplete. Still, the reality is that white space contributes to balancing the elements on a map and emphasizing whatever you want to highlight on your map. So the fact is that many scribes are used to filling white spaces with colors and gradients and icons, and most of the time it's useless. It creates um, cluttered maps and visual noise. Make your visual thinking, uh, you, you need to make your visual thinking breathe. Create silence. 
So remember, when you're mapping something, it doesn't matter if it's a graphic recording, a graphic facilitation, or, or a coaching session. Use the principle of silence in the dialogues. Avoid being, um, I don't remember the, the word in English. In Spanish, would be um, verborragico, um, verbose, verbose, okay? So avoid being verbose. Verbose means using or express in more words than, than are needed. So silences are very important in dialogue. The importance of silence is the key to give value to dialogue. And the same happens with visual thinking. You must create visual silence to give people the space to think and digest. So the way to make stand out your metaphors and your visual thinking are to put them in a minimalist context. So there is no one best method to create metaphors. I teach you, uh, I mean, I teach you most of them, not, not all of them, there, there are a lot of techniques but try to practice with the exercise I, I give you, okay? So you will find some, uh, some ways more effective than others. And as I always say, trust your inner kid version of you. And remember this, if, if you fear to be not understood, don't worry because uh, first of all, don't take things too seriously, just Add a keyword to that drawing and you will be avo avoiding misunderstandings in your audience. But always keep the playful mood and everything is gonna, is gonna be all right, okay? So uh, this was um, uh, an introduction to the topic in, in, in my metaphors membership. There are many other commandments um, there are a lot of other useful techniques like shadows, uh, caves, um, spotlights, containers. We also have uh, we also have peaks. Uh, peaks uh, are post-it graphic recording scenes, and it's a new way to do graphic recording by creating metaphorical. Um, messages in a in a tiny in a tiny format okay like this one posted graphic recording scenes it's not about doing animation based on movement okay it's not that okay i have the ball here and i move it here no it's about creating animations that convey a message hmm? Very, very powerful. And of course, um, there are also exercises to boost metaphors when coaching groups to teach people to think metaphorically, okay? So today I told you about the basics. Learning to think through metaphors is a process, okay? You have to practice, practice cases. Sometimes at the beginning, it's like, it's difficult because when we try to be absurd, it's like, no, no, why? they won't understand me. No, you have to practice. You, you used to be like that when you were a child, okay? Um, so the, the, uh, this, I, this is the link, I'm not too silly here. I, I'm, I'm not too silly. This is the link where you can get a, uh, promotion code if you want to learn more about metaphors, okay? Um, but if you have questions, please write me, okay? Write me. I'm always open to give information about visual thinking, visual metaphors. Um, I'm always, always available to to discuss and to share information with you.
Pijwesh? Yeah, Dario, interesting. And guys, when Dario says that he's available, trust me, he's available. He has like, he has been in touch with me like in five minutes. I email him and he replies back. So absolutely quick he is. Please um, share with him your exercises and he will surely be replying. And Dario, just to, uh, just to confirm the code which you have sent uh, has something special for our uh, bootcamp attendees? Of course, of course. Uh, give me a second. I will paste the information. Guys, you, you really should focus on this because this has been my this has been my biggest request to all the speakers that they should offer something very special to all the boot camp attendees. Is that cool, guys? Do you think we should get some special things from our speakers? Definitely. Yes. We yes, just did. Absolutely. Yes, Dario, really. Of course. I am. Drop I'm the here. mic, Dario. Oh, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. So, think, Piyush, can I say you something? Gave already a lot. Thank you for that. Piyush and Dario, All can I say something? Gave. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, I just want to share my experience, Piyush and Dario. Uh, when I attended uh, his first class, it was a mind blowing experience for me. It shattered some of my thought process. And I must tell you that some of the things which I used, I used it in the design thinking, especially devising the product and it really changed. So uh, some of the things which made me think differently uh, was uh, some of his commandments. While he has shown three, I think he has got a lot in his. <laughs> uh, and th that's where I think, you know, we start thinking differently. So my, my personal experience has been, uh, how do we make use of this, uh, especially in design thinking? I think that changed my perspective, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask one, one question, Dario? Yes. Give me a second, just a second, because I'm reading the message. Sure. Just a second. Sure. I will, I will put the information, OK? So you all can get the links and also the email to contact me, um, my Instagram account, my LinkedIn account. The ones who want to share, to, to tag me, you can tag me. If you don't want to tag me, it's okay. You just send me a private email, it's, it's okay. I just want to, to give you feedback um, and I will award the, the most creative, not more the most creative, the, the one who's who makes more sense about the disruptive situation, the, the, the out of context, okay? By giving a one-to-one -one free coaching session to the winner, okay? And then there you have, um, I will give 100 um, promotion codes for the courses, okay? So you have all there. Yes, you can go ahead with the question. Thank you so much for everything. I really enjoyed it, first of all. When you mentioned, uh, uh, don't be, I think, I don't, I don't know how you pronounce it, but a barbose, using too much to express, too much words. Barbose, verbose? Barbose, yes, exactly. Barbose. That is exactly the situation that happens when I am asked to draw. That is why I took this bootcamp, because I, before yesterday, I had no faith in me drawing. But um, when I get triggered with a single word or um, a picture, there are so, there's a network of pictures that pop up in my brain. How can I filter and pick up the right one or pick the one that has more effect? How can I do that? Do you have any advice? Yes, of course. Uh, can you please give me a more a context? You're talking about a graphic recording scenario? Or yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, especially when I'm trying to tell a story. I am a teacher and usually when I try to explain something for my students, I would like to put it in a story context. And I'm really good at telling stories, but never add drawing stories. Okay. So the first thing I do, I make myself two questions. What is the topic about in one sentence? And what is the the what is the story about in one word? This helps me a lot because it helps me to filter 
all the blah blah i'm always talking about the blah blah yeah. blah blah is the part that everybody skips always okay when you create a map and you start putting icons everywhere that are not related to the main topic you're wasting uh, time you're wasting space you are wait you're wasting a lot of things okay so when you ask those two questions you are putting the big title in front of you and if you as you said if you have a lot of possibilities to think to to draw try to draw just the things that are related to the answers to those two questions and mm -hmm. this is the best advice i can tell to people who do graphic recording that's the those are the two magical questions i always make to my clients before starting to um, draw in a in a graphic recording session because many times those two questions help my helps my client to understand his topic yeah exactly and avoid, and avoid the rambling the most difficult part as visual thinkers is not how to draw the most difficult part is to avoid the rambling and the unnecessary information okay yeah. I always say the same to my students. Visual thinking, it's becoming very popular. This is great. This is really great because the community is growing. But what is the problem? If you want to work doing this and you offer the same things that other scribers do, mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you fail you fail because they will always choose the ones that are cheaper. Exactly. So it's important to be disruptive with your, with your maps and it's important to create maps that people read and you achieve that with metaphors and you achieve that creating attention and you achieve that creating little stories. Thank Did you. I did Thank I, you. So yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And let me just repeat what you said, the two questions, just to be able to do that. I'm a teacher. I'm sorry. What is the topic in one sentence? And, and what is the story in one, one word? word? Yeah. Got it. Thank it you so you, very much. It gives you two levels of, um, um, of, of, of synthesis. I, 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 Synchronicity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Uh, I have a question, Dario. Yes. Uh, so when you are saying that, you know, uh, whenever designing visual thinking or so maybe, <clears throat> Maybe my question is not relevant here till I'll ask. So uh, when we are arranging a meeting with respect to particular topic and we want people to get involved in the meeting. Uh, so at that point of time, how to utilize this visual thinking and any suggestions on I, that I, line? I didn't understand the last part of the question. How we... Uh, say, for example, uh, when we are uh, arranging meetings for brainstorming or to solve a particular problem or to solve a team conflict. So what is your suggestion how we can use this visual thinking over there? Uh, OK, okay. Uh, how I relate metaphors to that, you mean? Uh, maybe, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Pidresh, can we can we do a, a, an exercise? Yeah, we I have we have all the time uh, if people are ready to. Um, yeah, if you have okay. guys like uh, yeah, we have already done with one point five hours. But if you still have time, you can stay back, or if you don't have time, you can leave. Um, it's it's a little exercise, but I will I will help We're you. We're here. A lot. It will help you a lot. Yes. Okay. okay. We're so, all here. Uh, good. This is an exercise I create uh, when I do coaching, okay? When I do uh, graphic facilitation. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, let me share my just to, just to add a little value to what Anita asked. Anita, the if I have understood your question right, this is the exact thing which you will learn on 18th of January and 19th of January with Matthias and David. They are talking on visual facilitation. So visual facilitation means how to use visuals in your meetings, in your process, in your projects, and all those, the workable use of, of visuals. So apart from this exercise, those days will be very useful to you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks, Piyush. This exercise has nothing to do with drawing. This exercise is what I use to um, help people, the people that I'm coaching, to start thinking metaphorically. And it's one of the most powerful exercises I invent. It's, it's really cool, okay? So, um, I need a volunteer. Yes, I'll volunteer. Good, Julia. Okay. Hello, Julia. Hi, Dario. How are you? Very well. Good, Good. to really put a face to all the wonderful animations. Good, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Julia, we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to show you a presentation, okay? Mm -hmm. And you are going to talk about yourself. Yeah. Okay, but... I will have the power of your presentation. I will guide your presentation, okay? okay. So you will start with, my name is Julia, mm -hmm. and, we, and you will start talking about you, but you have to relate the things you said about you with the images that you, that you will see. Okay, cool. Okay? okay. Yes. Are you ready? Uh, so there are four images when you, we arrive at the, at, to the final image, mm -hmm. you, I will, I will tell you, and you have to close your speech. Okay. Okay. All right. So start, and at a certain point, I will change the slide, mm -hmm. and you have to talk to to start talking to modify your speech to that image. Okay. Okay. So basically, I say my name is Julia, and I go on talking. Right? And you go on talking uh, until you see an, a new image, and you adapt your speech to that image. Okay. All right. So, go ahead. My name is Julia. I live in Graz in the south of Austria. I'm a graphic facilitator and I work at an NGO. And uh, we work with children all over the world. And malaria is really one of the big things that we have to tackle if we want to keep children safe all over the world. So mosquitoes are somehow our biggest enemies. And the other thing about mosquitoes is that they're really tiny and they make a big impact, almost like a clown in a circus, right? Clowns and circuses, they can be really, really introverted, but when they're on stage, they are big, they are huge, they make a big impact. Just like coffee in my life. Coffee keeps <laughs> going. <laughs> I would not be working or I would not be where I am without coffee. So I want to thank all the people who farm coffee all over the world. Last one, last one. Close last with one. one, okay. Because if you look at the world from space, it's really, really tiny, right? So we're all connected. The coffee farmers, the mosquitoes, the clowns, and even the underwater rugby players like me. Perfect, excellent, excellent. Amazing. 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 <laughs> That was hard, thank you. Thank you very much, it was excellent. This is very, this is super powerful. And as you can see, I invented this because the first reaction when I, when I coach groups is, I can't draw, I'm not creative, and, and a, a lot of blah, blah that they, that, that it's, that blocks us, okay? So when you do this exercise, you, uh, you show people that yes, they can. So it's not only, a, oh, I, mean, I mean, if you can do this that Julia did, you can also draw, okay? It's just about, look how she created a lot of stories a lot of stories, that's storytelling, that's real storytelling. A lot of people talks about storytelling. 
that, but they don't even know what storytelling is. That's storytelling, okay? She create a story talking about herself and connecting and related things. All the things you learn today are related to this exercise, okay? So answering the, the previous question, this is one of the three or five um, exercise that I teach in my community about metaphors that encourage people to be more creative, more playful, no matter if they draw or they don't draw, okay? Um, that, does that answer your question or you want to, you, you were more related, it was more related to how to draw things? I uh, know this helps. Uh, this helps. The self? Sorry? No, this no. helps. This helps, Dario. This is helpful. Ah, okay. This is helpful. Okay, 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 okay. Good, 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 good. Another question, Dario, for the same exercise. Have you ever challenged your participants to be, when, when you show the pictures and you have to, like, you know, change your story or, like, adapt? Did you challenge them to be always, always truthful and never lie? Uh, mm, no, 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 no. But you, you can try that the, the first time you, you try the exercise, of course. Yeah, that's a, that's a good alternative. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good idea. Good idea. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. All the information I, I give you here you can, of course, use it. You can, of course, adapt it. You can, I mean, you can play with it. Play, 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 play. Cool. So people, I think that will be best if you can uh, post uh, on your social media and tag Dario and ask questions there. And of course, our Facebook group is there where you can ask questions as well. Any, let's take last question. If you have any one last question, shall we take, or is it all yes. clear? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, last question, guys. Hi, Dario. Hi, Luis. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hi. Hi, Dario. I'm from Peru. Un gusto escucharte, en serio. Hola, Luis. I want to ask if, if this uh, kind of uh, a kind of draw or this method that you show us applies to different kind of business. Like example, I'm, uh, I am a civil engineer. I work with mines and I have to make a lot of presentations to my clients to show some uh, new projects or to warn new projects. Uh, or in other kinds of, or in other scenarios to to show uh, some some formal things or yes. some formal it topics. It works, Luis. This is the way I do my PowerPoint presentations. I put out of the blue images, and I create story. I and I create a story or or the information I have to show based on those images. The idea, the, my idea came up with, uh, because I, I had to, to make a very boring infor, um, presentation and I was thinking, okay, what can I do to make it more impactful, okay? So I came up with this. And um, I know that many people that I coach and that did this exercise with me, from that moment, start making some disruption. Perhaps not in all the, in, in, in perhaps not in all the the presentation, but with at least some of the previous of the of the first slides. Okay, you introduce your topic with a an out of the blue image, but you can you can give a lot of value to to your presentation. Yeah, no matter the field. The, the sector of your company, it always works. It works a lot. Absolutely. Yes. Thank now, you. what book about uh, you recommend about metaphors? Um, Alice in Wonderland. That's the book I recommend. Okay. 
Uh, why? Because the way the author uh, creates stories, the way he, you know, that in that book he makes the illustrations of, 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 of Alice, the way he truncates, elongates, um, he applied a lot of the things that I, I, I teach you today, a lot of things. So, yeah, you can go to the classics, but if I want to, if you want to start thinking in terms of metaphors, Alice in Wonderland. Thank you, Darío. Muchas gracias. De nada, de nada. Um, thank you, Luis, for your question. And Dario, thank you so much for patiently taking all the questions and answering them. Of course. Especially thank you, Dario, for accepting my request to be one of the speakers, and we loved it. This was, um, I think, this was a very special workshop when we learned how to draw metaphors, that to dis disruptive metaphors. And guys, yeah, so I, I for the last time, sorry, all yes. the information. So if you lost it, you have all everything there okay i'll also be sharing with all of you on whatsapp groups and emails whatever dario has uh, shared or offered now quickly let me share my screen with you all you can see my screen right so folks uh, today's session was introduction to metaphors from dario and tomorrow's session is i told you in my workshop that the first is the visual vocabulary the second is also an extension of visual vocabulary metaphorical vocabulary but now when you have learned to draw these vocabulary, when you have learned your vocabulary, that is the time when you start drawing stories, uh, which Dario was also talking about. Now, Wilhelmin, who is from Netherlands, she will be teaching you how to draw stories, how to take all those vocabularies and make a story out of it. You can use it for stories, sketch noting, and a lot more. So don't miss this, guys. This will be a session which you should really, really not miss. Be there live with Wilhelmin tomorrow, yeah? And uh, just to help uh, Dario a bit more, guys, if you are uh, if you are posting on LinkedIn and uh, to make life easy for Dario, because I know when you get notifications, it's not easy to, to try to, to, you can see my screen or not? Wait, I have to share my screen, sorry. Yeah, here. So when you are posting on LinkedIn, guys, as I told you in my workshop as well, go on LinkedIn, post it, and then there'll be three dots from where you can copy your links. Please click on submit assignment and you should choose, let's say day two, day, day two, which is 12th of January, choose this and then paste your link. It will make your, it will make, it will help Dario to exactly go to your link uh, or else by, by checking notifications. Sometimes uh, I have experienced if you miss out on checking all the notifications. So please mention your link and email so that Dario can, can check easily. Do you do we have a link or description for all these steps? Because I forgot from yesterday. Uh, pardon, come again. Do you have um, like a, an explanation of how to do these steps again? Because I forgot from yesterday. Which step, this step? The, yeah, the steps that you mentioned yesterday, how to post on LinkedIn and all of that. Oh, okay, making a video will be, okay, let me try that. I'll make a video and then post it on WhatsApp, okay? Thank you, thank you. Okay, cool then. Folks, I will see you tomorrow. And Dario, thanks again for uh, spending time with us and teaching us. Thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you, for, your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so very much. Thank you, Dario. Bye, bye. Dario. Bye, Dario. Bye, bye. Thank you, Dario. Thank you. 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 Four, fifty-five, fifty-one. <laughs> okay, shall we disconnect, Dario? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pidvesh. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you for everything. Bye, bye.